Thank you very much. Well, rising jobless claims and weaker than expected housing data released today, threatening to bring the sluggish economic recovery to a screeching halt, such as it is. Are we headed for another recession? Are we really asking that question again and again for the past three years? Time for a street fight for the bulls. We've got Eric LaSalle's RBC Global Asset Management Chief Economist. And for the bears, we've got Peter Schiff, Euro Pacific Capital CEO. Eric, I will start with you. Look, we've got a, a, certainly a bullish picture the past three days when it comes to equities. But let's talk specifically about dipping into that recession pit once again. Why don't you see that happening, particularly considering the data continue to slow down? And at some point, this trend looks like a grinding halt. Well, let, let's start by acknowledging that bad news. Absolutely, data is getting worse. Absolutely, it's been disappointing. And we frankly anticipated that. The debate is whether or not it leads all the way to recession. And I can say with a fair degree of confidence, it hasn't gotten us there yet. We're still growing, not wonderfully, but growing. We run a lot of recession models. And as much as there is a risk out there, it's not a risk that seems all that big. Even with all those data de deteriorations that you mentioned, the risks don't seem to be as big as they were last fall. Last fall ultimately was averted. We've got the classic policymaker response now, be it Operation Twist Extended, be it rate cuts in uh, China, Brazil, South Africa, Korea, Europe, and so on. That effort is being made. And ultimately, it seems to me that while we shouldn't expect a whole lot of growth, we can probably expect some sort of growth. And if you look at financial markets, they seem to agree. The stock market has not fallen out of bed despite all that's gone wrong well, in the last Peter, few Peter, some sort of growth is very different from a recession. You actually think that not only is this slowdown going to continue, but it will lead into negative growth. Yeah, well, I think, I think we've been in a depression since the end of 2007. I think that the depression has been punctuated uh, by a spending binge, a borrowing binge. That How would is, you define depression, by the way? Well, I think it's a series, a, a long, extended period of time of, of negative uh, growth or sluggish economy. You know, we, you, you, we, were, we didn't always have negative GDP during the 1930s. There were periods where the GDP went up, but we still considered it to be a depression. I think what happened is because of the, the stimulus that we got, we dug ourselves into a deeper hole. We went and spent a lot Both of borrowed Both fiscal money. stimulus and monetary right. stimulus. We spent a lot of money we didn't have. We bought things we couldn't have, couldn't afford. We ran up a huge debt, you know. And as the stimulus high is wearing off, it, the, the, the hangover sets in. We're back in recession. We realize that all the fundamental imbalances that caused the initial downturn are now actually worse because the Fed prevented the economy from correcting all those problems. Now we have even more problems. So I think the next leg down is actually going to be a deeper leg down than what we had in 2008. Okay. So Eric, what do you say to that? I mean, it, it, as you look at that, I mean, look, we, we haven't been deemed that we're in a depression, let alone a recession yet. But uh, when Peter says that he's seen this trajectory, what do you say? Well, you know, to begin with, we're not technically in a recession right now. I don't see how we're in a depression, which to me, by every standard, is, is worse. But I'll, I'll just say this. I think it's important sometimes to step back from the day-to-day, -day, even from the month-to-month, -month, and recognize the healing that's actually going on. The things that were fundamentally broken in the U.S. over the past few years were the housing market, the credit market, and the job market. And none of those things are going gangbusters right now. But the housing market seems, at least to me, to very clearly have bottomed. It is arguably working its way cautiously higher. The credit market is patchy. It's not great for mortgage. But we are seeing lending in the U.S. grow at the fastest rate we have seen since the crunch began. And the job market, again, we're disappointed as much as everyone else with the recent pace of creation. But we're getting jobs created. We're getting unemployment rates down. A lot of subtler indicators suggest there's some healing going on. And I okay. don't think we're back to scratch. Well, but at Peter, some point, we, we will be. We have an election coming up. It may change economic policy significantly. We don't know. But if it does, is there a way to avoid recession in your No, mind? and I don't think it's going to change significantly. But first of all, all, you know, more people have gone on disability than have found jobs. We don't have a healthy labor market. And if you're talking about the housing market or the banking sector, it has not healed. The Fed has both on life supports of 0% interest rates. The minute interest rates start to rise, the housing market is going to implode again. And all the big banks that we bailed out are going to fail again. And the federal government is not going to be able to pay the interest on the national okay. debt, let alone the principals. But Peter, you're a smart guy. You always know how to invest no matter what you feel is the way to go. Where are you putting your money? In the past, it's been Chinese toll road operators or Zimbabwe platinum. But where are you putting your money? Is it well, equities? Is it something else? Well, I've been putting it in gold for 10 years, and I'm still doing that. And yes, I'm still looking abroad, emerging market opportunities, stocks, foreign bonds. Look at some of the other currencies. The euro has been weak, but look at the Australian dollar today. I think it's at a 52-week high. Look at all-time record highs, I think, in corn, in, in, in soybeans. So you can look at some of the agriculture and commodities. Hold on a second. Plays. You're buying into the Australian dollar at exactly the point where a lot of 
lot of people say it's going to fall because China's not going to be using as much of their product? Well, they're not, look, the Aussie dollar has risen, I guess, what, 30 percent in the last five years against the dollar. It's a slow, steady climb. The Japanese yen is up 50 percent against the dollar during that time period. People are just looking at the euro. But I think when the dollar really tanks against some of these Southeast Asian currencies, which will happen when they stop hoarding our treasuries, I think Australia is going to sell a lot more to China when the RMB is stronger uh, than when the RMB is being is used to prop up the dollar. Not if they have nobody to sell their goods to. And There's a billion people in China that are going to buy those goods. And they haven't stopped buying our treasuries yet. Peter oh. Schiff, Eric Lascelles, thank you both so much for the street fight. Good to see you both. Thanks.